Let's stay on healthcare delivery because Health Minister Kwekwajiman Menu has directed public health facilities in the country not to turn away patients for lack of space. His directive comes at the back of a public backlash after a critically ill patient was allegedly left to die in front of the Kolibu Polyclinic due to delays by nurses and doctors there. Mr. Ajiman Menu says this is unacceptable and wants patients who encounter such situations to approach the management of the facilities for immediate redress of uh, people uh, who have been to hospitals in severe conditions who have been told that because we don't have space or there's no bed so we can't take care of you and just last week I got to know somebody died in this country a lady died because of this has this ever come to your attention and is this acceptable and how can this be fixed I mean in this instance if a patient doesn't come to complain the professional who might have sent the patient away wouldn't come to tell the minister this is what I've done. But I want to believe that some of these instances, in some of these instances, you may not be meeting the top management level of these facilities if you encounter a relatively junior staff mm. and instantly tells you this. You may turn yourself back, but I want to suspect that if you had met a relatively senior person higher on the ladder of management in the facility, these situations might, might not have happened. You know, I was once in France sometime last year, and I visited a facility um, at the Accident Emergency Center. You could find people sitting in wheelchairs, and they were taking infusions because there wasn't facility space in the emergency unit. So some were lying on benches, just like you see in some instances here in Paris. And that is what we call emergency. You don't turn people away to go and die. You have just on the basis that you don't have a bed. When I talked about Nick, when you go into some of them now, mothers lie on the floor. Women who are just delivered. Why? Because there is no bed. But they are not turning them away. Assuming you're sitting at the same hospital, and then somebody comes in labor, and you tell that person there's no bed, where would that person go? Will she leave Bechim to come close to Kumasi? Or leave Bechim to go to Suyani? What will happen on the way? But it looks like in Accra, it's like we think that we are in the same city. So when you come to our facility and there's no bed, you go to another facility. This is just not acceptable. You should have some first aid issues. You should treat it as an emergency, right? And after you have stabilized the person's condition, you want to find a place, you want to refer her to another place, you want to transfer her to another place. That is what we should do. But I don't even think that it is the patient's responsibility even to go around looking for where there is a bed. I believe a nurse, a midwife, a doctor, right, an administrator, somebody sitting in a hospital like Rage, can be contacting other facilities to find out if there is space before you send the patient there. Why will you tell the patient in labor, in a taxi, maybe not even in an ambulance that we don't have, that there's no bed to go away and find a place somewhere? Then the person will go to SNET and go to 37 and end up in Kolibu or in a La Polyclinic. It's frustrating enough to tell a patient to do that. So these are some of the things that we... we so what process. clear directives or instructions would you give? Must this continue or we must stop? What clear instructions are we getting from you? These instructions, I may engage my professionals and they will tell me more. I don't think these instructions will come to the public domain. After all, I'm mm. not giving the instructions mm. to patients, and I might give instructions to viewers. I must give instructions to where they belong. But for and assurances purposes, for patients that. who... For assurances purposes, the patients, what we are saying is that we are here in government to support and make sure that we are getting quality care. Mm. And quality care encompasses some of these challenges that we encounter. And therefore, when on our move towards providing quality care, these are some of what we call programmatic inefficiencies we will need to address. And that is why I'm saying we started addressing them, we're talking to each other. And our engagements always will come out with things that can turn into policy for us to give these policy directives for things to work okay. for us.